to talk about today, and let me, you guys are so quiet. Yesterday I was at the main yard, lots of questions. I don't want y'all to feel uptight, feel like you can't say anything. Ask me anytime, okay? I want this to be relaxed. Y'all ask me any question that you can think of that's related to this topic, okay? <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about hydration, and I think it's a good topic because you guys are working outside, and you know what? Y'all are losing a lot of fluid. You're losing a lot of water while you're outside. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an idea of about how much you need to take in, but also to recognize some of the symptoms of being dehydrated. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. You see on that slide there, more than 50% of your body is made up of water. Um, purpose of water, keep your mouth moist, your eyes and your nose. You know like in the winter time when the air is more dry, does your nose, I know mine does, gets dry and kind of cracked? I'm not getting enough fluid in. Um, and you, you guys may experience some of that as well too. Uh, but that's what water does in your body. It helps transport nutrients. Those are the vitamins and minerals from the food you eat. Gets it into your cells. Well, one of the big things on here is this right here. It gets oxygen to your <coughs> cells. If any of you have ever been dehydrated before, you're just kind of dragging around, feel like you don't have energy. We'll go over the other symptoms of that as well too. But when you don't get oxygen to your cells, you're tired, you feel like you'd go to sleep, feel like you could pass out. So water is essential. The other big thing about water, right there. I use the example of, if you went to the doctor before and he says, you need to start eating some more fiber in your diet. So you got to Walgreens, buy some of that fiber supplement powder, just put a tablespoon in a glass, add water to it, and then it also tells you to drink more water with it. Why? to help get that stool to come out. I don't know if you've ever done that before and you forgot to drink enough water with it. Has anybody ever done that before? No? <clears throat> I have, and it ain't fun. You get constipated. So you know what constipation feels, <laughs> feels like? What water does is it helps move that stool out. So water's important for a lot of functions in our body. So this slide here, got a question. Y'all are so quiet. So the question is, what are some ways we naturally lose water? Just, you don't have to raise your hand, just Sweat. shoot off. Sweat, yeah, it's what you're doing every day. Just like this slide showing. Who said pee? Yes, exactly. So let's look at the first one here, your skin. 99% of what you're sweating off is water. And so what I stressed yesterday, I found my water bottle, this is what you need to be replacing your body with, is water. Only about 1% of it is waste. Waste would be like <coughs> sodium, chloride. You're going to sweat those, sweat those off. And I'm going to get into the specifics here in just a minute of using a sports drink like Gatorade and using water. Um, but it says in, say, like an indoor setting, we sweat off about two cups of fluid a day. Well, guess what? Y'all are not in an indoor setting. You're going to be falling down here in this category. <coughs> Look at about how much you could sweat off per hour. That's a lot of daggum water, isn't it? So again, that's why I'm talking about this today. Just to give you some idea, if you're staying hydrated well enough, and what are some ways I can get, get the water in like I need it. Any Take questions? Breaks. Do what? Take breaks. Do you hear that? Breaks, <laughs> <Right. laughs> <Right>. exactly. <laughs> hey, now the group I talked to yesterday, some of them said that when it gets that hot, they, they usually do do that. Um, about every hour, they do go in for like a 10 minute break. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> um, we already talked about in your intestines. Yeah, you're definitely gonna lose, lose uh, fluid in your urine and in your uh, bowel movements, mostly in your urine. So about six cups a day with that. Lungs, how are you gonna lose fluid from your, from your lungs? I, I like to use the example, um, my glasses, <coughs> I got all kinds of gunk on it, but when I clean them off, you breathe on it, what does it do? It gets kind of wet. So there's fluid every time you exhale. So you think about you guys, when y'all are outside working in the heat, y'all are gonna be exhaling a lot more because you're doing such manual labor in really intense, high temperature uh, environment. So you're gonna be losing quite a bit more than what we're listing up here. So this is just saying more so for somebody that's like an indoor setting, Lose about eight to nine cups of fluid a day. That's a lot. I'd say, I'm just guessing here, y'all are probably double that. I'm just guessing, but y'all are losing a lot. 
Um, <coughs> back up. You don't have to raise your hand, but have any of you guys been dehydrated or know somebody who's been dehydrated before? Yes. How did how did that person feel, or how did you feel when you were dehydrated? Cramped up. Cramps. Passed out. Passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get any worse than that. Dry mouth. Feeling really thirsty. Sometimes people feel dizzy. And who said they passed out? Somebody passed out. So those are some symptoms, and I wanted to hit on that just to help you guys be, be familiar with that, okay? Because if you're starting to feel that way, you need to take a break. Don't be joking around with, with your foreman because, like my group yesterday, we, we cut up pretty much every class. I had one class that was real serious, and that was with the electricians. But um, anyway, we uh, I really stress to them, be serious with your foreman and tell them, I'm really not feeling right, and he'll take care of you. Um, the one thing that I was telling uh, my groups yesterday was there's a couple things you can do while you're at work to tell if you're hydrated as well before hopefully you get far gone in, in this situation. But right here, loose skin. <coughs> what in the world does that mean? About having loose skin? Um, let me show this next slide here. They tell us that if you get your, get your skin and pull it up like this and it stays up, like this picture showing you here, that's telling you you're dehydrated. So that'd be one way you could check if you're getting enough, enough fluid in or not, but just pulling your skin up like that if it stays up, like that picture shows you. Um, is there another thing that you guys could do? Um, and I'm gonna talk about it here in just a second. Can y'all think of something else? You could you could check yourself if you're hydrated. You quit sweating. Sweating? Yeah, you quit. yeah, if you quit sweating. Anything to do with uh, using the bathroom? Yes. Stinks and it's real dark. There you go. Excellent. He said if it stinks or if it's real dark, and I'm going to talk on that in just a second. I can just skip that slide there. But this is just basically defining what, what dehydration is. Just excessive loss of water. These are some causes of dehydration. If you've been to the doctor before and you've had a fever, what's one of the things they, t they tell you to do? Drink a lot of water. Because when you drink that water, that's trying to help get your temperature to come down because your temperature's up. That's why you're so doggone, doggone hot. So they want you taking a lot of fluid to help get that temperature to come down. It's kind of the same, uh, same mechanism too that your body does if you have like a severe burn. Whenever I say, I'm talking like, you know, third degree burn and so forth. Um, a lot of diarrhea and vomiting. I've had this before and I've had it so extreme as a few years ago, I had to go into, um, it's actually, uh, went to Dr. Turnbow, but I had to go to the hospital and they put an IV in me, so I had to get fluids. The doctor had told me, drink more fluid. I would drink it and then I'm throwing it up. So I knew as a clinician, after about four hours, if I'm not keeping that fluid down, I need to go into the hospital. And I'm just giving you that tip, that tip there, not to go to the hospital, but come to HealthWorks or give us a call, because um, we, can, we can tell you what you need to do. Come in and we'll get you hydrated. So just, again, making a personal story out of mine, when I, when I did go to the hospital, they put an IV in me. I was like a brand new person. I don't know if any of y'all have ever experienced that before, where you had to get IV of fluid. Yeah. Then you just feel like, oh, <coughs> just a brand new person, right? Um, not drinking enough water, make you dehydrated. Um, excessive sweating. We all fall into that category. Increased urination from uncontrolled diabetes or taking a medicine. Um, I put that on there because some people might have to take a diuretic, Lasix, I don't know what some of the other ones are. Um, but what those do is, is so the flu doesn't build up on you. Um, but when you're working in this kind of environment, you're probably maybe even a little bit more at risk of being dehydrated. Alcohol and caffeine. I'm gonna talk about those in just a little bit. But those can uh, act as a diuretic as well. Ways to prevent dehydration, drink before, during, and after outdoor work or exercise. Okay, my group at the main yard, they busted me on this one, and they said, drink, all right. Well, I wasn't specific on what to drink. I said, no, I said, it's water. So you definitely want to be drinking water before you go outside and do your work. My suggestion was, let's say you get up in the morning, 
and normally you don't eat breakfast, you just drink coffee or you don't do anything at all. If you do drink coffee, go ahead and drink your coffee, but on the way to work, where's my water? Have your water. Um, if you do eat breakfast, have water with your breakfast. It's important to get hydrated before you even get out in this, I'm gonna call it a sauna <laughs> type environment when you're out here. So get some water in before, before you get into work, okay? Um, these are just some um, statistics on here about not getting enough water, water in. This is a big one here. And like I said, I remember whenever I was dehydrated before, I mean, I felt like I couldn't do anything. And some of y'all are shaking your head in here, you've experienced that before, and you do feel that way. So look at, look at how less that you're gonna be working. And the longer you ignore it, the longer you're not providing yourself with enough fluid, your work capacity is just gonna keep on going down and keep on going down. So I really, really stress, get the water in as, as, as many times as you can. Just like now we're on a break, you're at lunch, and when you have another break, get some water in. Someone mentioned in here, because I said, what's another way you can kind of check yourself to see if you're hydrated or not? <clears throat> Boom, right there. It was you with the do-rag on. Uh, check the color. What's what I call it? <laughs> <laughs> um, check the color of your urine. So what does it not need to look like? Orange. Do it? Orange. Orange, exactly. So what should it look like? Clear. Clear. Clear as possible. So it needs to kind of look like this. And sometimes it can be lighter than that. And this is not real urine. <laughs> Does not need to look like that. And I had a lot of the guys yesterday saying, well, that's what mine looks like all the time. And if you guys can say, yeah, that's what mine looks like most of the time, I'll confess to you all. Sometimes I'll start out during the day like this, and after kind of the middle of the day, it kind of turns like this. And then after I get home from work, I start drinking more water, and then it goes back to this. Have y'all experienced yeah. that before? So you can rehydrate yourself. And it's pretty cool just by checking the color of your urine. But no, this is not urine, okay? Am I gonna gross you out, but? Pour it on the table. Well, you know what I do? If it's water. If it's water. <laughs> What if I, I did a presentation like this with a volleyball um, team, and uh, so I did, I was trying to get, get their attention some, so I opened it up and I did drink it. So I got their attention that way. It was just apple juice. All right, this next uh, suggestion on here says avoid alcohol and caffeinated beverages. I'm not going to be a food police about that. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. It's in a few more slides. But this is the suggestion on here to try to prevent dehydration. Well, I'll give you some suggestions here in a little bit. Drink throughout your day, as I mentioned. Really try to drink even before you get started, started on work. And those are just some suggestions on keeping cool. When I talked to the guys yesterday at the main yard, um, I was asking them about what, I, what I've done before is gotten a um, handkerchief and got it in water, put it around <coughs> my neck. And they talked about a, um, I want to say it was like a, they called it a gel. So I don't know. Right there. Well, they talked about when it was a gel. Um, That's Daddy put it in cold oh. water. It's cool. Do you guys like those? For about yeah. five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> when you're sweating profusely it, and it warms up, it doesn't do any good. Doesn't do any good. Because I mean, it's it's just wet on you. Know, it do you just put that in water? That's all you do. Cold water. Just, cold water. Can you freeze it? Yeah. yeah. Do you, have you ever done that? I don't know if it lasts any longer if you freeze it. Um, when I was talking to the guys uh, yesterday, we had talked about maybe if they had two of them, they could kind of switch it out. They could come to the there in the break room and switch it out because they said the same thing. It just melts so fast. Um, if they could swap it out or not. But did they get did they get something like that or y'all provide those for them? Up there, Andrew usually starts getting about this time. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Uh, okay, let's get to the, this more of the last part on here. Water needs. Um, I'm not going to give you guys an exact amount like you need 20 bottles a day because everybody's height and weight is different. So let me just kind of give some overall recommendations on how much uh, fluid you need to take in each day. I know I sound like a broken record, but I will say it again. Drink before you come into work. 
get about an eight to 24 ounce bottle. That bottle right there is 16 ounces. Drink that before you come, come into work. The suggestion is, is to drink, again, one of these every hour <coughs> because you're gonna be outside more than an hour. That's what the recommendation is. Um, now, I'm gonna talk about sports drinks here in just a little bit, but one of the uh, things that we have trouble <coughs> with is being able to stop your time to be able to go do that. So, let me be real with it. If you can't do that, break every hour to go, to go get something to drink. As I mentioned earlier, get it as often as you can. If you're just going to, whatever, get a rag to wipe your head <coughs> off, go into the bathroom, throw down some water. Get it in as often as you can, okay? No, it's so quiet. Any questions? No? All right, sports drinks. I have people say, well, I just drink Gatorade all the time. All right, your body is made up of water. It's not made up of Gatorade. So the recommendation on using, oh, I say Gatorade, it's not made up of sports drinks. So the recommendation is, again, if you're gonna be outside more than an hour, then let's throw in the sports drink. <coughs> the recommendation is do one of these, and then the next hour do what I call a sports drink. Next hour one of these, next hour one of these. Go back and forth with that. These are some suggestions, and it's on your handout of what are some better types of sports drinks to use. Those are the different Gatorade ones, and then there's a Powerade, Powerade one. Yesterday when I was at the main yard, they had um, a Popsicle. Um, what was it called? I think it started with an S. They had a Popsicle there, but it had electrolytes in it. Do y'all know yeah, what I'm talking about? Got yeah, yeah, that was it. Do you all have those here? Y'all, yep. y'all utilize those? Do y'all eat them? Do what? Are y'all out of them? Yeah. Did you hear that? They're out of them. <laughs> I don't know, am I supposed to tell you that? <laughs> okay. See, this was a good class to have, man. Let you know what's going on out there. Uh, but do y'all usually eat those? Do y'all eat those regularly? Okay. Do they taste good? I've never tried one. They do. They taste like Gatorade. <laughs> yeah. Different ones. Okay. All right. Last few slides here. I think I've got maybe four or five more. I just wanted to give you an idea of some other things that are going to provide you with some fluid because you get tired of doing this. I understand that. Tired of the Gatorade. These can provide you with some fluid too. Not as much as what this does. Um, but these listed down through here, like sodas, um, fruit juices, milk, teas, and coffee. But I stress on here, it needs to be caffeine free. It doesn't say caffeine free, it just says decaf. So decaf uh, Coke, decaf Pepsi. Do you know I like decaf Coke? <laughs> you gotta have that caffeine. <laughs> this is, and I'm gonna talk about caffeine here just a minute to, to explain that. But these are gonna provide the fluid that you need. Um, decaffeinated coffee, tea, um, you guys have those out here on site. Fruits and vegetables, awesome. These are great. Yesterday, where I was yesterday at the main yard, um, the break room didn't have air in it. And uh, so it was, it was hot whenever I left. So for lunch, I was like, what is in my lunch box? I had an apple, I had carrots. I didn't want anything else but something that was wet. I don't know if you guys feel that way after work or not. You just want something wet in your mouth. So I just want to thought this suggestion, maybe pack some of these in your box for lunch or for snack, some carrots, apples. You know one of the <coughs> best, best fruits to take in that has a lot of water is watermelon. 90% of it's water. So that's a, that's a real good one to take in that helps help quench that thirst some. Another thing I was telling the guys yesterday too is um, little canned fruits. Well, it's not in a can, but it's a plastic container that you could pack in your lunch. You just peel open the top and you can just throw it down like that. You don't need a spoon, but it's just easy just to kind of pour in your mouth. Peaches, fruit cocktail, pears. All right, last three slides. Last but not least, I keep on talking about your caffeine. Um, what caffeine and alcohol do, they do to act as a diuretic. It makes you just pee, pee water out. So when you take in um, a regular Coke, Mountain Dew, coffee, regular tea, you're just peeing it right out. So the suggestion is, of course my one point said avoid it. I'm not gonna be a food police, like I said. I just wanna make a suggestion on if you think you're taking in a lot of, say, Coke, Mountain Dew, coffee, or tea that's got the caffeine in it, 
maybe start cutting it back just a little bit. Like, I gave the example yesterday. I said, well, if you think you drink six a day, and the guys are like, oh, no, we do eight. Um, so I said, okay, if you do eight a day, then maybe tomorrow just try seven a day and sub substitute that Mountain Dew with water. Um, and maybe eventually, if you start cutting back a little bit each time, you'll actually start taking in more water like you need to. I'm one of those, you gotta work baby steps with me. I can't go cold turkey. I'm not that, I'm not that disciplined. But maybe just start making smart, small changes to where you're gonna get in some more water. But that's what these act like. They act as a diuretic. I gave the example of alcohol. Say if you go out, you're not supposed to drink it on the job, by the way. But let's say we're going out after, after work at night or on the weekend, and you go and have a beer. Mmm, that tasted good. And I'm thirsty, so you go get another one. Mmm, that tasted good, but man, I'm thirsty, so you go get another one. That's what it's doing. It's acting as a diuretic. So the suggestion that I told the guys yesterday is you have your can of beer, before you get your next one, let's throw in some water. Why? <laughs> you like that tip? <laughs> you can't do that. The older we get, the more you need to do that. <laughs> throw in some water, then go get your next beer, have that, and then drink some water. And don't leave here telling them, oh, that dietitian from HealthWorks said we could drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you a healthier way to do it to make sure you stay hydrated. But I want you to understand that mechanism of it because when you do drink it, buddy, you're ready to go back and get another one. It's quenching your thirst, and that's the unfortunate side effect of, of alcohol. But when it comes to caffeine, like I said, just try to limit, try to <coughs> cut down a little bit on it and substitute it with, with something like water. Um, last, I think this is the last slide here. Um, I'm not putting you on a salt restriction, but if you do, <laughs> laughing at it. If you do have heart or kidney trouble, it's not a bad idea to watch salt in your diet. Um, because if you do have heart or kidney trouble, your body has a hard time getting rid of that salt. And I don't know if you guys have ever eaten a real salty meal before and you kind of swell up. If you've got heart or kidney trouble, your body's holding on to that salt and it holds on to water and then you're like, well guess what's going on with your heart? That fluid's going around your heart and it's harder for it to pump. And some people can get in real bad shape if they have heart trouble, they can get into <coughs> what they call congestive heart failure. Boom, they <coughs> fall down from having a heart attack. So I'm just throwing that suggestion out there for those of you all, if you, if you do have heart or kidney trouble, it's not a bad idea Maybe try to cut down on real high salty foods like restaurant foods. Again, I'm not saying you can't eat there. Just start cutting back a little. Things you bring to lunch, Vienna sausages, hot dogs, bologna, start cutting down on, on some of those. Okay? All right. Did I sound like a food police today? <laughs> I'm killing you. <laughs> Any questions you guys can think of today? Y'all been awesome. I appreciate y'all com coming in today. This last slide is just reviewing over what I talked about. And I just really want to push it to you. Drink as often as you get a break. Uh, water, substitute with Gatorade. Water, Gatorade, go back and forth with that. Uh, my mom doesn't care for water. So there it is. If you wanted to uh, throw in like a flavor pack, that's cool to do that. And I've got more up here if you want some. But that's what those are right there, those flavor packs. Any questions? No? Well, I'll be, go ahead. I'll put you a question. Um, we'll be coming back. Um, I'm not sure when, but we're going to be coming, trying to hit every uh, site and the different shifts. We're going to have a different topic each time. Next month, our topic is going to be on cholesterol triglycerides, what foods affect that, even smoking, what does it affect on those levels. Um, and if we don't hit your shift, uh, my <coughs> friend Alex, he's videoing these, you guys can go on our website and you can wa watch it on there. But I told Andrew that I would have the um, handouts here for you guys as well too to help with that. Okay? <laughs> Thanks guys for coming. Y'all have a good day. Thank you.